Hey everybody, this is Anna. Welcome back to Painting Big. So today, people tell you to thin your paint, but they don't tell you that when you do that, the paint gets harder to control and how to deal with that. So today we're gonna to do a very short video on how to control your paint better as you head into some intermediate techniques like layering. All right, let's get to it. So we've got some paint, we've got some brushes. And the thing to talk about first is that control of your paint is really, it starts with less paint on your brush. So rather than dipping your entire brush in your paint or even most of your brush in your paint, it helps if you start trying to train yourself to only do maybe about, you know, one third to a half of the brush into the paint. Let's get a little closer. This is thin paint, so you can't see it so readily. But what you probably are noticing is that the paint wicks up the brush. Like I actually only touched like maybe a third of the brush into there, but you see that traveling up the brush right there. And that is the thing about thinned paint. As you add water, you get more capillary action. And so if you dip a lot of your brush, like if you were to start dipping your brush that far in, then in no time it would be up here and the paint would be being pulled into your ferrule. And the ferrule is the metal part right here. And when that happens, the paint can dry in there. And essentially that's what makes your brush kind of poof. Uh, it, where it doesn't hold together anymore. It's dried paint inside of the ferrule. So that's another reason to not overload your brush, but paint control is the main one in my opinion. Now, right along with loading your brush comes unloading your brush. So never just dip your brush in the paint and then apply it to your model. You won't be able to like, you'll get puddling, you get these big dashes. It doesn't look good at all, right? Whereas if you dip your brush into the paint and then you unload it, just a couple times, just a couple dabs on the side of your palette, or maybe if you've got a wet palette, maybe you've got an extra palette you can dab it off on. Some people use a paper towel, some people use a piece of cardstock, whatever. Whatever you unload your brush on. If you even dab it off a couple times, then when you go to apply it, suddenly you can do little like very uniform lines. You don't get all this puddling. The paint isn't running all over the place. You can really control it. You can even do tiny dots. So even a tiny bit of unloading helps a lot. And this paint, just to give you an idea, this is thinned two to one. So that's two drops of paint and uh, then it's thinned both one drop, one drop of water by ratio. I, I scaled it up a little for a bigger paint puddle, but you get the idea. So. In the case of two to one paint, that's enough. Like a couple dabs on the side of the palette, it's great. But some techniques like layering, they require thinner paints. So this paint right here is thinned one to one. So as many drops of paint there are, we have drops of water. It's really thin and sloshy, but you will actually use this for techniques like layering, where you want to get kind of translucent blends and stuff. So when you deal with paint that's this thin, you even have to unload it more because the water is gonna wick into there. We dipped just a little bit of our brush in there. You can see how little it is. And if I put it on, it's actually pretty good because I didn't uh, overload my brush. If I put a lot on my brush, then again, we're back to puddles. You can see the puddles, you can see the runniness. If you were trying to apply this to a small area or a little detail, it would flood. Like you wouldn't be able to outline the little belt buckle or whatever you were trying to do. So then you have to unload your brush. And now we're much better, but notice we're still getting some lack of control. We're still getting some puddles. Like there are little puddles at the end of this. And so if I unload my brush even more, oh my gosh, so many dabs, lots. Now, look at how thin and fine I can get. Like super, super good thin and fine. Like I could do eyeballs, I could do belt buckles. Like with this kind of control, I could do anything. I could do tiny lettering on some book, you know. Um, you know, could do tiny little, little scribbles going across a book's page, um, that kind of thing, you know. All of this is possible. And the thinner your paint gets, the finer you can generally go because your paint is gonna stay wet on the brush for longer because it's got more water in it. Makes sense, right? If there's more water in the paint, guess what? It doesn't dry out on the brush as fast, but it does tend to get runnier. And so you do need to unload it a lot more. So if you take one thing away from this video is that when your paint gets thinner, you're gonna to have to unload your brush more. Now, sometimes when you're trying to use just a, what I call a standard size brush like this one, you can see kind of in scale how it is, you find 
maybe that you still have problems. Like your paint is thin and you're just having real trouble controlling it. And it's not your brush control, you're pretty sure it's the paint. So in that case, the fix is to reach for a smaller brush. You don't reach for a smaller brush with thicker paint because you need the water in the paint to keep it wet on a small brush. If you try to use thick paint with a small brush, it's gonna dry really quick. So let's use this brush that's about half the size of our first brush. Our first brush, by the way, is a Da Vinci Maestro size one, series 10, which is the standard round. This is the same series, but it's a size triple aught. So about half the size overall. When we're loading up this brush, it's so tiny, I do put about half of it in there, but I don't have to unload it nearly as much to do these super fine lines. Now, one thing you may notice too is as I move to the smaller brush, look at how much more translucent that is. Hmm, so the fact that I have less paint on my brush may also enable me to highlight better without all these really bold strokes. So maybe I can build highlights a little better with that super thin paint and that small brush. Ah, oh, food for thought. We'll talk about this when we get to the layering video. So at this point, that's kind of what I want you to take away from this is that as you thin the paint more, switch to smaller brush or use less paint on your brush, unload it more before you put the brush on the miniature and you're gonna have so much better control and hopefully save yourself some frustration, which I am all about. I want you to enjoy your hobby. I want to save you as much frustration as I possibly can. If you're into a deep dive and you're looking for something substantial on this topic, I did do a video for ReaperCon 2020, which was a virtual con like so many in that year. Um, it's called Thinning MSP Paint, and I'll try to hunt it down and put a link down in the comments below when I publish this video. Thinning MSP Paint is a 90-minute class for ReaperCon 2020. So it's, an, it's 90 minutes, it's an hour and a half of me explaining various paint consistencies using Reaper Master Series paint. So if you're interested in Master Series and you kind of want to take a look at it, maybe learn how to use it because this consistency is a little different than other paints on the market, you can look at that video. Again, I'll try to put the link below in my comments or you can just go to Reaper's YouTube, which is Reaper Miniatures on YouTube and search for thinning MSP paint and you should find it. All right, folks, that's about it for today. I want to remind you all that I do stream for Reaper on their Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Reaper Miniatures every weekday morning at 1130 USA Central Time. So maybe I'll hope to see you over there if you have time during the day on those days. Otherwise, I do also have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash painting big. I love it. It's a really good value right now because I've been doing it for over three years. So there's a ton, a ton of content on all of the tier levels. And if you sign up for a higher price tier, you do still get all the content of the lower price tiers. So it gets you a lot to watch. Let's just put it that way. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you again next month with a layering video. This is Anne signing off.